Today, I'll be more focusing on visualization tools, which is kind of an overview. Um, myself, uh, also uh, a research uh, advisor and scientist at Nairo and a mentor of change at Niti IO's uh, um, innovation change. So uh, today we will more focus on uh, why do we require visualizations as well as uh, uh, what is the importance of data visualization? What are the misinterpretations and other uh, with few examples? So, my meeting, all the opinions, suggestions, and comments are on my personal capacity only. All of you kindly mute yourself and switch off if there is someone in the platform. But all the slides contain. The contents, pictures, videos are taken from different web articles, lectures, tutorials, and their respective uh, websites, and they own uh, their copyrights. Uh, the reason is uh, we have taken from multiple tools as well as the pictures from a website. So uh, that's why I'm taking up this disclaimer upfront. And uh, uh, you could be able to uh, find my slides already in SlideShare. So just to give an idea about uh, a drug discovery hackathon it, and its things, uh, because many of you have been asking for this. So the drug discovery hackathon 2020's uh, official link is on the first one, that is Innovate India My Golf. And then training sessions will be streamed always in uh, MHRD Innovation Cells YouTube channel. Uh, all the training sessions will be there and uh, further other things will be coming up. Uh, the training updates you could find in a uh, NIST uh, website uh, where uh, Professor Shastri already mentioned. And uh, uh, just to give a details, because many of them were also asking uh, that um, how to start, what are the details, what to do, what not to do, do's and don'ts. Already, uh, Dr. Abhay Jare, CIO of MHRD Innovation Cell, already has given a, a clear video uh, session on that. So you could find uh, in his YouTube channel about it. Now coming towards a vertical three, as I told you, these are practical sessions, uh, contains demos, hands-on uh, for both the open and proprietary tools. This will include uh, visualizing tools, which I'm starting today. Uh, then there'll be chemical databases, curated databases, target databases we have to focus on. And then there'll be softwares that will be discussed on how to analyze the data from high throughput screening or large amount of data training set data or experimental data that you're bringing in, then databases access and how to filter them, then structure-based drug designing, ligand-based drug designing, fragment-based drug designing, chem informatics, molecular dynamics, and data visualization. Each one has its own importance on uh, drug discovery. So all these softwares will be covered, as I said, both open and proprietary. So today I'll be more focusing on these particular topics. What you need to expect is more of a, the visualization part, uh, then role of visualization in drug discovery, uh, image processing or data processing uh, that we are looking at, and then how to visualize chemical structures, then chem informatics data, chemical space, protein interactions, MD, and few case studies which will be possible visualizations. So why uh, visualization is important? What ideas these visualizations are trying to communicate? So visualization could be many as we, I'm going to come forward. I know you are expecting pictures, but let us wait for a few more minutes. So uh, what we are trying to say or what we are trying to convey from different visualizations, I, I, I'm not sure the audience probably most of you are from biology background or chemistry, or even from pharmaceutical background, and even it could be computer science also. For all of uh, the particular uh, research field, I have something for all of you, even for computer science also. You have very important role in the visualization in drug discovery. So uh, that's where we need to have uh, what ideas these visualizations are trying to uh, visualize and trying to communicate. Uh, this is very important, including a learning object. Uh, say or convey from that. What are the objectives that we are trying to take it up? 
whether it should be a graphical or a schematic representation. Graphics means uh, the uh, if you look a person or if it is drawn like a human. Schematic means you're just drawing the line of two hands and two legs and just a oval shape for your face that is called schematic. So, or if you're trying to talk in terms of chemistry, uh, like the line notation, just a 2D structure is schematic. When you go for graphics, it's a 3D form, either in a surface or colorful forms will be graphic. So we wanted to understand what in what representation we wanted to give. And there are both 2D as well as 3D. 2D will be of a planar where just X and Y, but when you go for 3D, it's more of three dimensional where X, Y, Z uh, representations will be there. And always when there is no experimental data available, and when I'm talking about proteins or some other um, chemical data, uh, it is not available. We always choose for data driven structures. When we talk about data driven structures, people who are aware of homology models or trying to elucidate structures virtually or using computer programs, how we can come up with a structure even for chemical space or even for a protein or macromolecule. I hope uh, you are all aware who are all uh, not uh, uh, getting into this particular domain. What is known by proteins, drug, ligands, receptor. I hope uh, the previous two sessions already gave you a just about understanding of these terminologies. So I'm not going too much into that. And also we need to understand when you talk about macromolecules or proteins, the structure determines the function. So we need to have a very good starting point of structure. to convey the message. So now I wanted to give you a, a just about the tools to support visualization, proteins, small molecules, etc. As you know, a vertical three is more about software tools, hands on, right? So rather than giving too much of uh, understanding background about visualization, I thought to give some uh, information and knowledge base about tools that is applicable and available. First is a data image processing. So we have a lot of high throughput data available. How we are going to narrow down to certain amount of uh, molecules? Uh, uh, should we work on billions of molecules or should we work on thousands of molecules? It is sometimes unimaginable to try to carry out that particular kind of analysis. So we need to do kind of, uh, what to say, trimming or we need to kind of do some filtering. So there are certain tools available for data as well as image processing including chemical data. What I'm trying to say data means it's chemical data. I'm not talking about anything on financial or economic data. I'm more focusing being we are on the platform of drug discovery. I'm more talking about chemical data or interaction data between the targets. So we wanted to understand from the image or from the significance of what that image is trying to convey to us. So here, if you see some of the pictures, uh, they are trying to say here uh, that which region of the molecule is more significant for specific property. If you go to the bottom, it is trying to show you a chemical space where uh, what is the coordination between uh, different structures, R group analysis, a three dimensional uh, plot, which is trying to explain different parameters and also a pie chart, uh, which is again uh, comes into a, a plot where explaining about influence of different pharmacokinetic or even physiochemical properties. And then you can see a bar, bar uh, plot also. But you can see there are chemical structures embedded here. So this is what I'm trying to talk about data uh, processing here. So when you have huge amount of data and when you wanted to do a structure-based drug designing, the amount of time and the cost for computing will be tremendously high. So we want to reduce that. So we want to avoid uh, which is not promising and we want to select only the molecules which is more uh, confident we are. So we sell. I'm not going too much into that because that's where uh, on the following days you will be coming up with uh, those um, uh, sessions where how to do that. So ultimately we, uh, we have a funnel, we filter it and we come up with a, a small set. It could be thousands, few thousands, and then we try to do a structure-based drug design. So that is the uh, uh, idea we're trying to data processing and image processing. It is not simply that, yeah, I have a lot of having it, but what about others? So on a general perspective, we need to process our data or more visualize the data 
uh, before making a decision on what amount of data that you have to carry forward with next set of uh, analysis. So this is very trivial and very, very important when you're working towards to hackathon also, because you have more uh, uh, large data sets also being referenced. And of course, CDAC is also having uh, giving you going to give you access to certain databases. Of course, you will get more de uh, details about it in their uh, session. And you are also free to have access to freely or openly accessible databases. So you need to be very careful how to process these data before getting into large uh, or in-depth uh, analysis on uh, certain algorithms when it wants to process through some calculations. Now let's to, uh, go through some of the chemical structures, how to visualize, how to prepare them. So you will have more in-depth uh, uh, training on these softwares, most of the softwares which I'm going to list here also, so that uh, you not to worry about, but I'm just giving you an idea. Also some of the licensing policies, as uh, Professor Shastri already recommended me, uh, please suggest some tools that uh, uh, they can already start working on uh, rather than for any other paperwork or too much of other uh, licensing issues. So the first one is OSRA. It is optical structure recognition application. That means if you have a chemical structures in a patent or it is an as a picture or even if it is in a PDF and you wanted to convert it to an SDF file or a SMILES file, which can be loaded to any drawing tool. So OSRA is a tool that is for that. This is developed along with NIH and it is being provided by NCI, National Cancer Institute. This is a free and open source downloadable Linux software. I don't know how many of you are very much comfortable with Linux. Uh, otherwise, they do have a web interface also to do that. So you can upload your uh, data to it. If it is more of a confidential, please don't do that. You can try to use the downloadable version and then try to do it offline. It can read documents like GIF, uh, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, uh, PDF, uh, Postscripts and all, and then you can generate SMILES and SD formats. So this is a uh, converting graphical representations of uh, chemical structures. Uh, that's where uh, you are trying to convert this because this is very helpful when you have large amount of data in PDF or in picture and you wanted to draw it. Now, you have to be very careful. That's why I put a note there. Curation by a human knowledgeable uh, understanding is in chemical structure is highly recommended because there could the, the accuracy is not that great. So you need to ac actually look at whether they are all looking look good after. Uh, many of you uh, who has uh, understanding of chemistry would have tried this tool. So uh, Marvin Sketch is also a featured chemical editor uh, for making science accessible on all platforms. I also drawing, it helps in drawing chemical compounds, import, export, multiple file formats, structure display into different journal formats also. For example, if you're looking at ACS uh, document style, that, that's where you wanted to put in a specific font size and all those things based on the journal, they take care of it. Marvin view is something that you want to view a larger data set uh, let it be SDF in a tabular form or even a single mole file that can be done. Mole convert is something similar to Open Babel, where you can convert different file formats from SDF to mole, mole to all those things will be taken care in the coming sessions in this week. Now, this software is a freemium. When I say freemium and this particular terminology will be used throughout my slides. So freemium means uh, some parts. Parts. Uh, you have to, uh, it's proprietary. So please check with the providers. Uh, they will be helping with you. And uh, they are also on board with the hackathon. So they will be having a session. You can have uh, your questions with them. But otherwise, uh, it's uh, you're ready to download right now and trying to uh, start drawing pictures, I mean, uh, structures, making the documentation, everything, it's helpful. And it has also very few uh, calculation um, uh, comes sketch it is also a comprehensive drawing package it can identify tautomers something similar to marvin also but again this is also a free uh, to education or academic license if the participants if there are commercial entities or any others please uh, you have to ensure that you have access but cdac is going to uh, access give access in many tools uh, uh, to the participants uh, they will be giving much more uh, details about it 
Coming to the uh, next one is BioVR Draw, uh, which can also draw and edit complex molecules. Then also it is, uh, has a capability for managing complex biological entities, including the ability to register and retrieve peptides, oligonucleotides, and oligosaccharides. They also have certain add-ins for calculations and prediction of certain physiochemical properties, enumeration, bioavailability, isotopoma, distribution, and stoichiometric calculations. This is also kind of a freemium, which is available only for academic licenses. But this is very intuitive. Also, these all softwares are accessible. So I'm giving you the links here. On all the slides, there will be direct links are given. So please feel free to uh, uh, use it. So now if you ask me which one do I recommend, I recommend everything. Because unless we try something, uh, we cannot say which one is good. It is not it is not that whatever is good uh, or the suggestions made by me is good for your objective because our objectives will be different our projects are different our problem statements will be different from one person to another person so we need to try it and choose the best one based on which matches our objectives and requirement that is the way that we have to take it up then coming to chem informatics data that is where uh, we have data warrior Data Warrior is an open source program for data visualization analysis with chemical intelligence. It is also an interactive data visualization analysis, as you can see on the picture on the right hand side. It has also built in chemical intelligence. Chemical intelligence means it tries to tell you if there is any valence issues. It tries to also predict the fragments. It tries to tell you the salt forms and other things. A real time data filtering on alpha numerical and chemical criteria is possible. Prediction of certain molecular properties from the chemical structures are also possible. Dedicated chem informatics modules also which support drug discovery is also available. So uh, this is a freely available uh, software. I tried myself on 1.3 billion data set. Uh, it works, but you need to have good amount of RAM memory in your machine. So hardware is always a requirement when you go uh, with a larger um, uh, size of a data set so that you have to keep in mind this is free to use without commercialization so uh, of course it is free to use by everybody but without commercialization so uh, as i told you the initial data visualization uh, uh, data warrior there are other tools available like uh, from star drop uh, they also have similar uh, capabilities also so uh, that is another alternate uh, to data warrior then comes a nine A nine is a pl analytics platform. Now we always talk about data science, uh, right? It's more of numerical data, image processing and all. But the nine has a good community on chem informatics, bioinformatics, QSAR, machine learning and statistical modeling for uh, structure based and ligand based drug design, including pharmacophore, pharmacokinetics, physiochemical properties also. So NIME is a very good platform, as you see on the right hand side, it is a node based. So the leverage insights are gained from your data to optimize them and you can model and visualize them also. Uh, there's a very good uh, visualization for data as well as for image, even for larger data set, there is something called as RD kit. We will be having sessions on RD kit also. So RD kit can be used in NIME as well as via as a Python library also. So RD kit uh, Indigo, uh, many more even uh, proprietary nodes are also available as i mentioned some of the extensions are proprietary so there you need to have their licensing but otherwise nime itself is free and uh, also there are many nodes uh, which can be used for drug discovery is also free um, so this is the link that is uh, proceeding to uh, nime also uh, it's it's a little bit uh, uh, big software where you have multiple things can be done to automate things for example, first I wanted to do uh, load the uh, large data set. I wanted to screen with a certain criteria. If I say my, um, molecular weight should be less than certain number. If I want hydrogen donors should be between certain number. So I try to do that filtering. Second, after that, I wanted to convert all my 2D structures to 3D structures, three dimensional structures. And then all the 3D structures I wanted to minimize in order to have a very optimized uh, uh, and also good starting pre-organized structure. So if I want to do this one by one, I will be doing, uh, I won't, I have to sit and wait until one job gets finished. But nine, the advantage here is it gets automated. When the loading is over, automatically it does the um, filtering part. 
then it automatically does the 2D and 3D part. So we have to assign the job and it takes care of it automatically one by one. So you need not to be in front of your machine. So if every parameters are done in the right way. So softwares, unless we uh, the human expertise is being put too much into the software, software cannot do wonders, right? So you have to keep in mind uh, any of the softwares, don't consider them as black box. It's not click of a button, you're getting something. You have to put your insights into it and a any software, whatever data you give, they accept it. The question is whether that is reliable or not that we have to decide as a person who is submitting the data. Now let's go through some of the 3D visualizer. So most of them are proprietary, but it's free for academic or education licenses. For example, Chimera. Chimera is free for all. It's a very uh, interactive visualization. And recently they launched something called as Chimera X. Very much wonderful. Uh, too much of uh, um, what to say, implementation of VR, virtual reality and ambient occlusions also. But otherwise Chimera is an interface to modeler. So modeler is basically for homology modeling of protein modeling. So you have certain problem statements uh, in hackathon for modeling also. So uh, a modeler uh, which can be also interfaced with Chimera. So Chimera has a good interface to modeler. There are other uh, applications and providers also will be giving you other options as well. Then CASP is for binding pocket data can be also generated from Chimera. Structure based sequence alignment, superimposing of structures and many more. And you can also generate high quality images and animations using uh, Chimera. Next is BMD, uh, one of my favorite tool when you come to molecular dynamics. So, uh, uh, and it is already interfaced to NAMD. So NAMD is a software that is used for molecular dynamics. So in order to view trajectory, data, you can use VMD. So it's a molecular visualization program for analyzing, animating and, and a large biomolecular systems. So that is the advantage here. Uh, this is also again a freemium. It's free for education and uh, uh, academic, but for commercial, you have to contact them directly. So it also uh, uh, has a data uh, analysis of MD. And so as you can see on the right hand side, it also generate graph and uh, RMS, RMSD uh, uh, plots also it can do. It has a capability to do that. So this is also a great visualization, which is called visual molecular dynamics that is VMD. Then comes MGL tools. Many of you are aware who are all using Autodoc. So it's a molecular visualization program for displaying, animating, and analyzing, again, biomolecular systems. It has a direct interface to Autodoc as well as to Autodoc Vena. And uh, it also helps in preparation of data. For academics and education. Then comes with Pymol. Pymol is also a standalone molecular visualization program. And they also uh, released a data that more than 65 to 75 percentage of the publication visualization pictures are uh, generated using Pymol. So this is very popular within uh, protein crystallographers uh, because of the high quality of its rendering and speed and vers uh, versatility. It also helps you in labeling, editing, and different representation. They do have a very interesting licensing policy. They are open source and free to education, but for others, you have to purchase the license. So if you go to this website, you will get more details, but this EDU is mostly for education. Then you have Avogadro. Avogadro is also an advanced molecular editor, especially for small molecules. And it can also visualize design of cross platform using uh, computational chemistry, molecular modeling, bioinformatics, material science, and other. That's why I said it's a cross platform thing. Of course, you have interface to Autodoc in that, and also you can do a confirmer generation. So, confirmation generation of uh, molecules, uh, single molecules are possible, and you can do an optimization also. It also has a flexible, high quality rendering and powerful plugin architecture also available in this. This is completely open source and free uh, to use. Then comes NGL well. Uh, this is where I was telling you for computer science people also you have a role here. NGL view is a completely web based uh, molecular graphics where uh, WebGL is required. Uh, it is uh, to visualize biological complexes. Even I have generated a, a Gromax Jupyter notebook. It's there in my GitHub. 
where uh, uh, NGL view is used. So uh, uh, in the Jupyter notebook, it's an ID. Visualization. So NGL, NGL view can also visualize something similar to VMD, where uh, the frames, trajectories, everything can be visualized. But it's not a click of a button. You need to write codes for that. As you can see on the right hand side, uh, this is a Python code. So you have to write Python code to integrate the NGL view. So in the track two, I know that uh, it's more of uh, machine learning, modeling, uh, also using R, RD kit, and also um, uh, Python programming will be coming into the picture. So I'm sure that for data visualization, this will be a right tool, uh, NGL view, uh, if you want to visualize the interactions also, including MD uh, data. M NGL view is goes very well with uh, compatible with uh, MD SRV, MD Traj, and PyTraj. So MD Traj, PyTraj are the trajectory analysis tools, uh, which is again available in Python libraries, uh, which is uh, more um, confined to Gromax as well as Amber, and even other molecular dynamics tools also. Um, so these are the uh, one where coding is required actually, right? There are additional visualizers also, because I always started my uh, kind of uh, hands wet on molecular modeling and drug discovery using RAC2. Everyone start doing that. Then only all these advanced visualizers we go on. Then we have JMOL, which is again a web-based visualizer before NGL view was there. Then we have Maestro. Maestro is again a free visualizer for academics. Again, we have Discovery Studio Visualizer, free for academics only, including Maestro. Then ICM Browser, Flare Viewer, these are all free for academics, but not for others. And it's just a visualizer. It doesn't do any calculations, nothing as such, but it's just a visualizer. You will get to know much more details about uh, when uh, the real cases and examples are coming in uh, by different uh, uh, speakers. Another visualization is very important. When you try to do molecular docking analysis and uh, always you try to do uh, docking studies uh, and finally you wanted to showcase the results of it. Most of the time we try where is the position of the binding pocket and other parameters. But in order to understand where the interaction or which atom the interactions are taking place, it is very important to have a 2D depiction. So 2D depictions, uh, there are many proprietary tools available, but these are some of the freely available tools, uh, which is pause view. Uh, you have the links at the bottom. Uh, so here it tries to generate a 2D depiction of the interaction between the ligand and the key uh, atoms of the key amino acids or residues in the protein. Any, you use any software for docking. Let it be any software. You're just bringing in your protein and the docked structure, the docked confirmation, and you will be able to generate the structure. And I'm sure you remember this, this was being seen somewhere else. Of course, all the RCSB PDB structures, wherever the co-crystals are there, uh, there, you, there you see the similar uh, picture. The next one also very famous is uh, Ligplot Plus. Uh, earlier it was Ligplot, now it is Ligplot Plus. They also have a kind of similar, but it's a different kind of visualization. As you can see, where is hydrophobic region? So uh, in the previous one, uh, the green colored region you have, they talk about hydrophobic region and wherever the line lines, it's about hydrogen bonding. Uh, but here also the same, you have, you have hydrogen bonding with the distance between uh, the interaction between the ligand atom and the, uh, uh, the residue, the amino acid residue atom. And it also sh showcasing you which all the other amino acids are within the binding pocket. So the link is also given here. So these are all uh, 2D depictions of the interaction. This is very, very important uh, when you're trying to uh, showcase or when you're trying to explain your data, uh, which uh, talks much more than what you're writing. Um, Samson, I, I, I'm not going to put any pictures here because uh, it has a lot many features there. Samson is also something similar together. So Samson has interface to Gromax, Samson has interface to Autodoc, uh, Samson has interface to many other tools. 
So it is also a visualization uh, tool. Please go to uh, Samsung Connect. Some of it is also a freemium. Uh, they have uh, more data uh, like uh, paid version. So that's why I didn't put too much information here. Uh, but you can go to this website and get uh, more details. Now, this is where I want to more focus and spend few time, uh, some of my time here. Principles of visualization. So I picked up some of the selected 10 principles of visualization. So uh, all these animations are taken from Science Week from uh, Jenkinson's research lab. So you can search online, uh, the videos are there, the exactly one. So first, let me take this one. Uh, all the, uh, wherever the animations I'm showing A, uh, this is what we are expecting, but that is not uh, the concept that is being explained here. In all the examples, uh, the B is the right concept, right? So here, what we are trying to say is, molecules move through random collisions. Molecules move around through random collisions, resulting in random Brownian motion. For example, in A, we are looking at a particular complex moving smoothly and linear before binding to an actin filament. Whereas the B, the motion is complex and very chaotic. So we are always trying to, uh, on a dynamic situation, we wanted to see uh, on a random collision and see where it fits in. So for example, uh, molecular modelers, they, you, you all know something called as by, uh, blind docking, right? This is something similar to that. So we are trying to see whether uh, we are able to see uh, all the possible interactions or the collisions to come up with all the uh, uh, depicting the random box. So B is the right visualization that we can talk about uh, this particular objective. Molecules are in constant motion. Newton's first law states that objects remain in motion without external force. But while molecules are subjected to constant force from all the sides, the result is that they are in constant motion and they do not start or stop spontaneously, right? As like you see in A, it start uh, with a spontaneous stop and then it goes to uh, uh, motion and it again stops. Cascading are not moving unless they are involved in binding or whereas in B, they are constantly moving, continually moving, even when not immediately involved in the process. So we need to consider the keep the molecules moving. See, um, um, why I'm trying to say this, try to correlate with different examples of drug discovery also. When you're talking about drug going and interacting with a protein, don't think as we do in a software or in an animation like. No, nothing like that. It's all in constant motion. So we have to see how, how we wanted to make them uh, or uh, convey the message in the right way. Of course, the softwares are taking care of the calculations. But ultimately, at the end, if you wanted to convey the message with some animations or visualization, we need to do it in the right way. Uh, these are the 10 principles that is coming up. Uh, another one is intermolecular attractions on local forces. The relative motion between two binding partners. I, I know uh, many of you will be working on membrane, part, uh, membrane proteins as well as ion channels. And also there's some examples, same similar example to that. So in A, if you see sodium ions flow towards and traverse a voltage gated ion channel as though they are attracted by a magnetic force. But whereas in B, they move through the channel through local collisions and interactions with the transmembrane channel. That's how the calculation takes place. So we need to see how the local collisions or interactions takes place. What are the other possible uh, forces are uh, uh, available then with the transmembrane channel. So we need to consider ensuring the distant molecules are unaffected by pulling the forces. So algorithms really take care of this constraint. So it's not that we are pulling everything towards through the mem uh, membrane or the ion channel. It's about which is with the close vicinity uh, in, through the ion channel that's which gets passed through and they are not get affected by the pulling forces. When you do molecular dynamics and all, uh, yes, you will have a situation where you have to define constraints. Don't pull everything there so uh, we because we created a system in this manner so this is where uh, the difference in two different visualization what it is trying to convey the message next one unproductive collision occurs more than productive collisions that is not every encounter between complementary molecules results in binding that's where you have to be very careful when you're talking about docking any structures any molecules you give which can fit inside the pocket 
right it will dock any compound you give now who is going to decide which is the best compound that's where you have to have a little bit more of mechanistic driven drug discovery you need to understand what are my key molecules what are my key residues in my pocket which i have to concentrate if i'm going to interact with that amino acid where how it is going to affect the mechanism of that particular disease or whatever objectives that you have taken up right so whether it is uh, going to inhibit or going to stimulate we need to know unless you know the mechanism any compound you bring in it can go and bind so we need to have an understanding of the pathway also so it is a combination that's why we recently or more recently i can see in many that has a very good meaning there actually so we need to have a better understanding especially when you are doing uh, structure based drug discovery so here uh, what we statistically they are likely to be more unproductive collisions than productive ones but an example here a as you see they come together bind on first encounter right they are already defined this is where i'm going to bind i'm not going to try anywhere else i'm very stable there but on the b as you see they collide a number of times on different areas before their orientation result is in tight binding so docking programs all the docking programs takes care of the condition of b they try to search all the neighboring interaction points and then only they confine to a region and as you can see different conformation of the molecules also try to interact with different interaction points within the pocket of course you are defining the pocket based on the uh, shape or the volume of the pocket so we need to consider including non binding collision it is not that only single defined uh, binding collision but there are other binding so when i say collisions here take it in the terms of interaction okay uh, where they are having an interaction next example many instances of molecules and events can exist this is again a very interesting um, example because um, uh, whenever we are trying to work on hypothetical proteins or whenever we are trying to work on uh, where there is no experimental evidence of the binding uh, pocket or uh, the key amino acids which takes part in the mechanism uh, we always go behind a pocket identification based on the pocket we try to in but now the question is did you try all uh, most of the time we say that uh, that uh, software has scored one of the particular pocket as the best one so we did interaction on that that is the case a case b will be we tried on multiple molecules i mean multiple uh, uh, events also that means multiple areas also which could be because it's a hypothetical protein we are not definite about where uh, is actually the key amino acids which is not much reported so typically many instances of molecules and events present in the given environment repetition can also reinforce the process being depicted as in the example a only one copy each of sidrocalin and enterobactin are shown which binds together whereas in b there are several copies of uh, each uh, and multiple binding events are taking place so consider presenting multiple copies so here uh, that's why i explained in a different way there we have to see different uh, pockets which are possible there and we also have to see multiple events i am sure that many of you are aware who are into this domain you also carry out a protein ligand uh, um, uh, uh, molecular dynamic simulations so that there it tries to take about multiple events also extend they take care of it until unless we define that multiple events or repeated events to be taken care most of the algorithms are capable of doing it but we have to ensure that we are defining uh, that particular parameter next comes not all instances of a molecule change the state okay so here the a situation was there was no molecules left behind everything formed uh, there was no extra subunit left so here not every molecule is used in a process or it's change its states more monomers are present than will be incorporated into a polymer or typically more substrates are present than will be converted into a product likewise not all molecules will cross a barrier or will bind to a chelator so here the example a was that no subunits were formed it's all being formed as a single viral capsid i didn't include the picture because of i wanted to, this text much bigger uh, because it's uh, something more complex one 
Whereas in B, once a capsid is complete, there are still subunits that remain. This is the real case that is happening. So consider leaving some molecules behind when, uh, when you are trying to incorporate or when there is a change of states or when there is a process is happening. That is always there. Even in a chemical reaction, you have that, right? Then molecular landscapes are also crowded and they are diverse. In that situation, what we do? In most of the cases, when you are trying to do a molecular docking, we make clear that water is removed. All the cofactors are removed. We clean the surface, everything. Okay, all the heteroatoms are cleared. And we try to conserve only the receptor and make it dock. Ensuring that no hurdles there, nothing is crowded or diverse. But in reality, is it going to be like that? No. So, when you are having different cellular environments are busy and crowded with very little empty spaces, particularly if molecular water is also included. Of course, water will be included. Even uh, that's where uh, when you are trying to uh, calculate binding energy, uh, we are trying to consider water molecules and then uh, try to uh, calculate delta delta G and then to define uh, the binding energy in terms of water. That means desolvation terms and many more other factors. I, uh, you'll be getting more information during uh, other dedicated sessions. Even without a depiction of water molecule, macromolecules can take sizable percent. In this picture, there is a lot of crowd, right? There's nothing there. As you see in the initial picture, it was very clean and it can pass on. So the molecule moves in an intracellular environment consisting of actin filaments and a nucleus, wherein B, a diverse suit of proteins, RNA, metabolites, and they are more filling the surrounding cytoplasmic space. So consider populating molecular envi environments with macromolecules. That's why molecular dynamics, because we wanted to take it to a different environment and then try to simulate and see whether that interactions are still stable. If the interactions cannot withstand for a longer time frame, then your docking interactions are unstable. You have to look at other solutions. Next comes with molecules that are physical entities with defined boundaries. Molecules are physical entities with defined boundaries means it's intersecting surface meshes provides conflicting or absurd information about interacting and binding sites. In this example, A, the DNA clamp slides along a DNA strand with coarse mesh that overlaps with itself with the DNA. You can see there is no uh, grains, I mean, there is no gap or space there. So it, it closely goes around uh, with itself with the DNA. Whereas in B, the meshes are tightly defined. And then they show space between the clamp and the DNA, indicating intramolecular forces that keep the molecules from occupying the same space. This is very important when you're talking about ion channel or, uh, or movement of uh, drug molecules through a different conformation or when you're trying to do molecular dynamics on open and closed conformations. These are all uh, our key factors that to be considered. So we, we give less importance to the visualization, rather we give more importance to the quantitative number or score. But tomorrow when you're trying to convey this through a paper or a, through a presentation, there's a big difference between these two pictures actually, right? Now we might think that's okay, we still got the result. That's as I told you already, visualization is we wanted to try to convey the real message of which is on real space or on reality. So we need to consider respecting the atomic boundaries with surface meshes. That's where the B is more appropriate where there is a, a, a gap and the, they are being, the meshes are being defined. Now, flexibility of the proteins. Now, coming to docking, again, most of the time we convey So most of the time uh, we are doing a, a rigid docking uh, in the um, in in, in uh, mostly with the docking part, and then uh, we in real cases proteins are flexible, right? So we need to see how uh, the changes in chain is happening uh, with uh, uh, flexibility also. So rigid has its own 
um, uh, uh, drawbacks on getting the exhibiting the flexibility. So, oh, am I okay with? Okay, I, the protein is a flexible. So, proteins have internal freedom of motion that also allows for specific functionality. Some parts are more flexible than others, and some proteins are more uh, uh, than others. So, in this example, uh, in this example, what I am trying to uh, do here is, uh, in, um, okay, I think uh, just I'm the with the intimate. Uh, yeah, now I'm back. I think yeah. So here example you see the membrane protein catherine moves in the membrane but in internal grid whereas in b the five extracellular domains are linked by short flexibility so we have to consider showing the protein flexibility so uh, just doing a rigid docking uh, doing a rigid docking is absolutely fine that's okay but you have to carry out molecular dynamics to define the flexibility of the chain of the protein so we need to consider showing the protein flexibility also right so uh, things that you have to take next is many binding reactions are reversible so permanently and many reactions are reversible at individual uh, molecular level so you have that the m c one complex phosphorylates its substrate at S6K1 the first time that it binds in every case. Whereas the B, the substrate dissociates and bind again before phosphorylated. So this is the condition that we have to see before dissociation and then when it is getting reacted after multiple bindings while we are doing the binding studies. So uh, these are the things that we have to take care uh, very clearly on it. Okay, so uh, let me try to switch my internet. So uh, that's where we are trying to see uh, how uh, to consider including some unproductive bindings and dissociations also. Now, um, uh, until unless you define these uh, uh, parameterization, uh, we cannot actually take up uh, uh, these problems and visualize them in the right way, right? So. Okay, so um, we should be ensured that whatever analysis you are trying to take and convey and put it into the visualization and interpretation of the data, it has to be seriously taken care uh, for giving about uh, uh, productive and uh, uh, binding uh, associations. So that's all from me for today. Uh, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for your patience. Uh, sorry, there were some issues the network but i think now it is fixed i would really thank uh, dr abe jere uh, dr papri and the team at uh, mhrd innovation cell uh, professor narari shastri dr nagamani lijo and his team uh, dr kunal roy uh, dr amit prasad dr srinivas and uh, rajiv gangal who were uh, we were all closely working towards uh, this drug discovery hackathon in the back end uh, and uh, uh, there will be more people who all of us will be giving more sessions in this coming week. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take it up. Thank you, Dr. Giri, for the very nice talk. We are getting a lot of comments. That is a very useful and very informative session. And thank you for uh, acknowledging the entire team that have worked really hard with you. And uh, for now, we...
Hello. Okay. Okay. Now, now am I audible? Okay. Okay. So uh, we will take. Well, there are a lot of uh, comments that uh, these are very useful and informative in uh, sessions. So we get a lot of comment on that, and then well, there are lots of questions also. But for yes. the interest of time, we will uh, discuss probably five six right now, and the rest of the questions we can take on Saturday session that we are uh, talking Fine. about. Fine. Right. So uh, I'll go to the first question from uh, Mr. Jyoti Prakash. He is asking whether two D or three D visualization is better. On to showcase. If it is a uh, docking parameter, you require both. When you are going to show two D alone, it is just going to tell you about the chemicals and the neighboring acts of the respective residues. But we also wanted to see the three D because we want to see the lipophilicity or hydrophobicity of your binding pocket, the shape and size of your pocket. How it is getting interacted? Is there any empty uh, or occupational spaces available for a chemist to explore? So, in order to understand that, you still need to have three. It is completely depending upon what kind of data and what kind of data analysis that you have done to convert. Okay. The next one is: What are the factors we have to know to select a visualization tool? Uh, but. Uh, uh, very difficult to answer. So uh, it, the fact is, uh, I cannot generalize it, right? So if working on a molecular image, as I already you work on, uh, you have to choose uh, like a PNG. There is a disturbance in the audio from your end. Oh, is it okay now? Yeah, it's better. Okay. So they will be trying to see, for example, action. Molecular dynamics, uh, looking at uh, uh, trajectory analysis and others. So we want to pick up the uh, visualizer which can support to analyze those data and other aspects. For example, there is a tool called Infinity, which can explore different chemical spaces. Uh, but uh, other tools might not be capable of doing it. As like uh, what I told you about Data Warrior, you have a billions of molecules with a lot of data. You wanted to do a filtering mechanism. So there you have to use data warrior. It's all depends on what kind of data you want to analyze and what the tools can support to analyze. So you need to have an understanding about different tools to make a choice. Okay, Shweta Singh is asking uh, whether in the during the hackathon whether we would be provided with academic versions of the softwares or the advanced version, and from where we could download the softwares. I have showed you today or you can download the next minute only thing you need my address otherwise they need to have you need to give your academic affiliations otherwise whatever tools I showed you today all can be downloaded right now advanced features where I showed you freemium you have to contact the right people some will be offered i think so but you will get more news i i am not the right person to tell about that more but yes there will be more news coming up in this week itself so you will get to know what are the other software tools advanced feature tools will be being offered uh, to all of you of the participants uh, in connection with this question the next one is with free tools is there a compromise in quality of the results we obtain For me, free paid the old process in free. There is no one sit and write re uh, re reply to your email for any of your support or scientific or technical questions. It's only forum. For a paid version, there is always dedicated person to reply for any of the questions you're asking. That is one. Second, all the paid versions, of course, they would have validated it and they come up with that. But free tools also can be validated. You can validate yourself. So there are many free tools for example, uh, there are challenges happening every year. So challenges for these prediction tools to understand the capability. There is drug discovery challenges as well as protein modeling challenges also. I could see this open source tools are ranked top based on the accuracy for all these challenges. They are all published. They are all open. Please check it online. So there is nothing like quality and all. It's all about how you are going to handle for open source, you have to have a little bit more learning 
and might be some customizations are required so you need to put more time dedicate your more time on executing this uh, in a very good way but other paid versions already it is being a ready product you need to just use it that's all so for me both are good i i don't deny both are bad both are really good so there is no quality issues if you use a free tool or anything like that nothing like that it's up to you how you're going to uh, convert it to a quality data okay and uh, next one is whether totomarts are taken care of by osra totomarts uh, no uh, they are not really taken care uh, there is a paid version of a different company they are providing i don't want to promote any companies here rao so but, but yeah they are not taken care osra has those accuracy issues but uh, marvin sketch uh, has inbuilt osra osra there so um, they also have the same capability so totemus we have to look into it that's why i clearly mentioned as a disclaimer uh, human knowledge uh, uh, that uh, should be looked at so you have to check each one gets converted from the software uh the next one is from vishaka singh she is asking which filter is more efficient tool to screen fragments of drug discovery and how we can use it so coming to fragments uh, there are two questions now uh, when you are coming uh, when when some of the databases they have uh, uh, what to say salt forms for example uh, a compound will be having hcl or nacl or some small fragments are you trying to remove those fragments and then trying to do in silico studies that is one question if that is the case you can do you can use uh, data warrior or similar other tools uh, for you to prune and clean your data set if the question is completely related to fragment is drug designing or de novo then uh, there are uh, tools which is available uh, for uh, uh, for example creating fragments and rejoining these fragments considering synthetic accessibility and synthetic feasibility but unfortunately most of those tools are not open uh, but you have scaffold hunter but scaffold hunter can help you to understand about the scaffolds not really the uh, fragments so i am not aware of any open source tool but you have a tool from open eye open eye of course gives it for academics for free um, so you can try uh, the tool there otherwise some of the offerings are already there from um uh, uh, during the hackathon uh, anyway so you can try those options also uh one another quick question is which is better autodoc or autodoc vina so autodoc vina is my pick there uh, but uh, please be careful in defining your uh, uh, grid size and uh, your uh, config file if that is wrong i cannot say autodoc vina is also good so you need to be very careful in defining the grid size considering which are the key amino acids then autodoc vina is good even in the challenge autodoc came up the top uh, better predicting a docking tool along with others the, sorry the next one is as android also works on linux platform can we use the softwares on android devices too see android devices i have tried the certain libraries putting into the android environment is a bit difficult uh, so I, i i don't think you can have it because here when you're going with uh, vmd or even uh, for example other visualization tools they require open gl and uh, when you're going for ngl view they require web gl so can android have all these uh, uh, graphics related libraries then answer is yes but i i am not sure whether all these libraries are available so it is very difficult for you to get these uh, dependency libraries for this visualization to have its uh, robustness there so android of course there are few uh, apps are already available for visualization of pdb uh, mo drawing molecular structures all those things are already available but on a very advanced i showed you i am not uh, yet sure about it okay next one how image processing of python can be helpful in drug discovery uh yes uh, so uh two things we can consider one is uh, uh, combining nlp uh, and image process so if you want to collect uh, all the patented uh, molecules 
uh, you need not to sit and do it. Uh, you can uh, do uh, machine learning based uh, uh, models uh, to do the image processing to identify the right structures and then build a data set for that. Similarly, what you do for NLP, that's why I took NLP as an example. So NLP, again, you are putting all your publications into a docket or a bucket, and then you are trying to extract it from the keywords based on and to populate whatever things are coming. So this is something similar to stitch and string database for uh, something like text mining for NLP. But for image processing, uh, I, I would see more on a interaction point of view as well as on the chemical structures from the patent uh, extraction. But otherwise, uh, I, I'm not so expert on that area. So this is what I am aware of. Okay, we'll take the last question now uh, from Ms. Sanjita. Uh, and I think it's a little broad question. She's asking, apart from Python, Pilgrim, and Batchmaster, what yeah. else softwares are required in QA in the pharma industry? Uh, I think whatever you have listed was more of a coding or scripting or so uh, in pharma industry recently uh, recently means one two to three years uh, they already got in ML in learning and AI so they extensively use uh, Python libraries um, uh, as well as other supporting libraries like R. When you come to deployment. It is not about Jupyter notebooks and whatever you are doing online. So when you're going for deployment, you have to look for a larger data set getting deployed like Hadoop and uh, others. So uh, it depends upon what kind of data they are going to put. It's more clinical data. Uh, again, it's more numbers and images. When you're going for drug data, it's more again numbers and structures because they are, as well as fingerprints because you have uh, uh, physiochemical properties, pharmacokinetics properties, which is relating to the structure. And then you also use machine learning models to reverse engineer in the sense if you want to design a new molecule from the property. So you are saying need these, these properties required. Can you come up with a possible uh, structure uh, which is can, which could be called as a candidate or a hit molecule. So these are the level of uh, understanding of uh, getting into the uh, uh, machine learning. Another very much uh, implemented uh, right now and right now drastically being used in pharma industries target identification and validation. So there are a lot of uh, machine learning platforms are being already used where they wanted to identify the uh, uh, target based on uh, pipelines. So you just give uh, millions of molecules and uh, then they try to put it on uh, different targets and, and they come up with the uh, scores based on selectivity and um, uh, other binding affinity, not only structure, it could be other uh, pharmaco uh, like uh, polypharmacology or systems biology approach based studies also being done. Uh, already we know that there is something called as uh, uh, string string and stitch database. There also if you can give a chemical compound, it will try to try to get the interacting uh, targets and try to report it. It could be based on experimental or literature or even based on predicted data. So it can be anything. So pharma industry is a lot more in investing on target identification and validation on the machine learning and then they also come up with the chem informatics air arena also to you know, as i told you in different 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 applications are there being i'm a, a computational medicine chemist i more look into how i can improve uh compound is coming so that's where all, uh, uh, every drug is comes in. it's not that screening is simply a database and reporting some of the compounds is going to get you a drug we need to enrich it we need to see how better this can be done uh, rather uh, better than the reference molecule or better than already being reported. So we need to do an optimization there. So in order to call a chemical compound to be a drug like or a drug candidate, it is not just docking result. It is not just biopsy or potency data. You need to ensure your drug can pass through membranes so that molecule is absorbable through your human intestine in this time you should be also careful that your drug is safe herg liability like cardiotoxicity or other toxicity parameters and you also should ensure that your drug or a molecule is having a pro-drug strategy so that it doesn't break down during metabolism so until you consider all these factors we cannot say that uh, i found a drug just based on uh, ic50 or just based on docking results we are doing a hit identification process 
initially when you're doing all this screening process. So we are narrowing down the funnel where there are a lot bringing it down. So for that, we uh, machine learning is going to drastically help us in uh, um, making the process much faster. So one of my collaborator, he was able to uh, do uh, uh, docking analysis, like interaction study analysis on two lakh molecules. Uh, two lakh molecules using machine learning pipelines. He was able to get the result to me for the first top hundred in four and a half hours. I don't think for a docking program on a normal laptop we can do that. No, not at all possible. It it will take more than that. So that is the advantage or um, ad, uh, or benefit of using machine learning in pharma industry as well as for the other community. That's that's a.